good morning uh, as part of uh, dnb curriculum uh, that every institute has to have their surgical audit being discussed at the end of the month uh, we are having our uh, surgical audit discussion and uh, uh, this will be mr bangur hospital audit uh, presentation by uh, professional students uh, we have three units unit 1 2 and 3 uh dr milind uh, alokji will be presenting uh audit for the unit 1 general surgery at ebar bangur hospital so milind please share your screen and present dr nashkar good morning good morning sir good morning good morning sir thank you very much Uh, good morning. I am Dr. Milind Alokji, and I will be presenting the surgical audit for October 2022 of under uh, Unit One of General Surgery. Unit is under Dr. Kunjul Chakravarti and Dr. Siddharth Mishra. Uh, in summary, we have total number of eight OPD days and total number of nine admission days, and around uh, 1,100 total OPD patients. Total number of elective OPD days was six. Total time in the uh, planned OT uh, in the lab table was around 17 hours, and in the open table was around 10 hours. The total number of minor OT days was seven, and time in the minor OT was around eight hours. Time in the emergency OT was around five hours. We did not have any mortalities in this previous month. Now, when we look at the admission, the overall summary, we see that we had uh, around 20 elective admissions and 14 emergency admissions. So, 30 elective admissions and 14 uh, emergency admissions. uh around 20 20 patients went for elective operations among which 15 were females and 5 were male and eight patients had emergency had, had emergency interventions of which uh, five were male and three were female minor operations were 41 uh and we had two morbidities which i'll be subsequently discussing in the elective admissions <clears throat> we had patients for who came with the diagnosis of chronic calculus cholecystitis Six of these patients underwent laparoscopic cholecystectomy. All were female, and one underwent open cholecystectomy, and was also a female. Uh, patients who were uh, admitted with gastrointestinal and perianal uh, uh, admissions. Uh, one patient who uh, came was came with a diagnosis of carcinoma rectum, and she underwent. She said this was a female patient who underwent a low anterior resection with a temporary low pileostomy. Uh, there was one male patient who uh, was diagnosed with fistula and eno and underwent a fistulectomy. one female patient who uh, was diagnosed as fischer and eno and underwent a lateral internal stenterectomy and uh, five patients who were diagnosed with recurrent appendicitis and all of them were underwent laparoscopic appendectomy in the hernia and groin surgeries uh, we had one uh, female patient who uh, had a ventral incisional hernia and uh, she underwent a mesh hernia plasty whereas one uh, patient uh, who had an umbilical hernia one female patient uh, we performed a tap hernia plasty on now in the breast and endocrine uh, section uh, there was one young male who came with the problem of unilateral gynecomastia and uh, we did a subcutaneous mastectomy for this patient uh, in one a female who had a complaint of fibroadenoma and excision of the fibroadenoma was done and uh, one female who had uh, was diagnosed with colloid goiter underwent a total thoracic among emergency operations we had two cases of acute appendicitis uh, one male and one female and both of them underwent open appendectomy uh, there were four cases who came with the foot ulcers and uh, incision and debridement was done uh, followed by regular dressing and two cases of perianal abscess came where we did incision and uh, some patients were admitted uh, through the emergency who were mainly managed with conservative management uh, these included two patients who came with acute gallstone pancreatitis and two patients who came with acute calculus cholecystitis one patient was admitted uh, having biliary colic or later diagnosed biliary colic and also managed conservatively uh, one patient uh, was admitted having dyselectrolemia associated paralytic ileus and was also managed conservatively uh, there were two patients two male patients who were admitted with polytrauma they had uh, rib fractures with chest complications and they were managed uh, managed with conservative management along with icd insertion uh in minor procedures and emergency interventions we had uh, the multiple procedures were performed including wet biopsy from ulcerative lesions excision of sebaceous cyst and lipoma excision and excision of papillomatous growth zadic procedures performed for five patients in the id of incision drainage of abscess 
uh, was done for 11 patients and foreign body exploration was done for five patients. Uh, uh, three chest drains were given during this month and one uh, there was one patient who uh, we had we did a suprapubic uh, catheterization. Now, uh, we, as mentioned earlier, we did not have any mortality, but we had two morbidities among the female patients in uh, this previous month, and I would like to uh, elaborate on them. Uh, the first morbidity was a 63 years lady who presented with a complaint of bleeding PR since five months and was diagnosed with carcinoma rectum. Patient underwent a low anterior resection with temporary loop pileostomy. Lower midline incision was given, extending from three centimeters above the umbilicus to the pubic symphysis. On the second post of day, a mild thick discharge uh, came along the incision line from two separate places and uh, along these places, few sutures were removed and the discharge was drained. There was no foul smell from this discharge. Uh, subsequently, we followed this patient up by uh, twice daily dressing and every time we ensured that we completely emptied <coughs> this area where the discharge was coming and the discharge sub 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 subsequently uh, decreased and um, uh, the patient was discharged on POD cell. Second morbidity was a 54-year lady who presented with complaints of neck swelling since three months and was diagnosed with colloid goiter and the patient underwent total thyroidectomy. On the third post-op day, there was uh, neck swelling was observed uh, with collection of fresh blood in the some amount of fresh blood in the suction drain, but there was no sign of respiratory distress. We, we re-explored uh, the patient and a bleed was found near the right inferior pedicle uh, post, uh, which was banished. And post re-exploration, the patient was stable and the further post was uneventful. The patient was discharged on post-op day symptoms. Thank you. Okay. Regarding the morbidity, uh, this patient having a wound discharge, yes. uh, did you did a culture sensitivity of the discharge? Uh, so we uh, send uh, the culture sensitivity because uh, although we did not suspect pus was there, but still the initial discharge, they, they came, we sent it for gram stain, uh, culture sensitivity and AFB, sir. But uh, sir, the, the discharge completely subsided. And since the patient recovered very well and the patient was wanted to go home, so we discharged her by POT7. And on follow-up, when the patient came uh, with uh, the reports, the reports found no growth of uh, any organism. <coughs> In the thyroid patient, the patient has got uh, bleed. How did you diagnose? Same evening or uh, No, sir. On the, on the third post-op day, sir. On the third post-op day, sir, we found that there was a neck swelling. And uh, uh, sir, uh, we uh, we uh, but there was no signs of respiratory distress, and also that the drain that we had given, we found a little bit of fresh blood. So sir, we suspected. So we based, based on high index of suspicion, sir, we uh, re-explored. You find the active bleed in the inferior port. Uh, sir, there was a small. Sir, it was not fully secure. So there was a small amount of ooze that was com completely coming in. That was only what was what we found as we opened the layers again. We found multiple as was small, small collection, which we then cleared. And among all the other areas, this was the only area where we where we felt that it was not secured properly. So one of the vessels actually we used bipolar instead of a when I, few vessels we used bipolar, and I feel that one of the vessels did not seal properly, and one of the small vessels in the inferior pedicle was bleeding. Okay. That we had to open and later ligate. Yeah. Simple bipolar may not hold all the vessels because uh, particularly superior pedicle, uh, you need a good vessel sealer or ligar shear to control. Yes, sir. So, go back to the uh, elective beast. Yes. Uh, no, that's emergency. Is it uh, fracture rib <coughs> chest complications? What, what are the chest complications? Yes, sir, uh, the, we had two patients. One patient had a fracture of uh, multiple ribs on unilateral on one side, on the right side. And this patient came with only a pneumothorax. So for that, we did an ICD insertion. The other patient, sir, had uh, basically came with a history of uh, a heavy object fallen on the chest. This patient had multiple rib fractures on bilateral sides. On one side, it was from the third rib to the seventh rib, and the other it was the fifth to the eighth rib, sir. This patient, uh, sir, uh, in the initial X-ray, uh, there was uh, the there, there was no uh, no problem with the chest expansion was found. But the patient was not. Uh, we did a repeat X-ray on the second day when we saw that there was uh, uh, we suspected a uh, there was a hydro uh, pneumothorax, uh, hemo pneumothorax on one side, and the other side there was a pneumothorax. But after the we put the drain in, there was a little bit of blood collection on this side also. And after uh, four days, when we did the repeat X, uh, repeat X, the lungs were very well expanded, sir. 
So, so this patient might be in severe disease if he has got one side hemonephrotra, other side pneumothorax. Sir, but they will, sir, it actually developed very gradually and we, because we suspected that the patient will may, might have these complications. Initially, the patient, the patient throughout the course was maintaining saturation. Only at one point in the second day, the saturation was around 92% when we went on oxygen. Uh, and that is the time then we got the, again the repeat uh, x-ray done, suspecting that some chest complications. Yeah, in this patient, a CT was done? Yes, sir. Because CT uh, sensitivity is better than chest x-ray to diagnose mild hemothorax or a, uh, even a uh, hemothorax. Yes, sir. The CT was done, sir. We got a, we got a, a HRCT thorax along with the CCT whole abdomen done, sir. Okay, uh, we pass on to the uh, uh, audit by the uh, unit two, uh, Dr. Prashanjit Basu, who is a first year uh, DNB resident, will present uh, audit for unit two. Good morning, our respected teachers and our faculty members. I am going to present surgical audit for October 2022 under Unit 2 General Surgery. Summary here total OPD days 8, total admission days 10, total patient with COVID 19 infection nil, total OPD patient 1140, in which old 456 and new 684. Total number of elective OT days. Eight. Total time in OT uh, table one lab 30 hours 30 minutes and table two 42 hours 30 minutes. Total number of minor OT days 10. Total number of mortalities nil. Audit work 2022 in which elective admission. 48 male includes 20 and female 28 emergency admission 18 in which 8 are male and 10 are female elective operation we did 27 in which 9 are male and 18 female emergency operation 6 in which male 5 and female 1 mortality nil morbidity 2 in one male patient and one female elective admission in which we did uh, elective what is hepatobiliary and pancreatic splenic surgery uh, and chronic calculus cholecystitis in which we did lab cholecystectomy eight total number of case eight in which male are two and female six no open cholecystectomy in gi and perianal cases Fissula in nano, fissure in nano. In fissula in nano, we did fissulectomy. In fissure in nano, we did lateral anal sphincterotomy. Uh, fissula, three cases, two a male and one and female. And fissure in nano, two, one male and one female. In hernia and groin surgeries, we have umbilical hernia, in which we did lap hernioplasty. Uh, the modality are tap and one patient only <coughs> one female and in incisional hernia mesh hernioplasty at retroactus been done uh, one female patient inguinal hernia are seven cases six are male and one female in mean, uh, intestine tension free mesh hernioplasty and herniography done in two cases to both are male In breast and endocrine cases, we have breast fibroadenoma in which we did local excision of fibroadenoma. Two cases are there. In miscellaneous, we did laparoscopic appendicectomy and excision of pyelonidal sinus and one toilet mastectomy. In emergency cases, we did acute appendicitis in single cases for a single male case and in diabetic ulcer 10 cases are there four are male and six female one peptic ulcer perforation in which did graham pass repairs uh, 
both are male cases two cases and one single hollow viscous perforation uh, sealed hollow viscous perforation in which we did exploratory laparotomy with loop ileostomy minor cases we did excision of hemangioma Just give summary. Just give summary. Excision of hemo, uh, uh, hemangioma, excision of pyogenic granuloma, lipoma excision, nail avulsion in a case of ingrowing toenail paranoia, sebaceous cyst excision, ganglion cyst excision. Morbid in morbidity, we have two cases uh, one male and one female. In male cases, the patient uh, presented with a sealed hollow viscous perforation in which we found a, a gas under dry form. Uh, later, we explored that case and, uh, and a loop ileostomy done in that cases. In which uh, at uh, POD 5 onwards, we notice a wound infection uh, in the main surgical site. We did repeated uh, dressing daily and uh, later on we put uh, that in negative pressure wound therapy and in female cases in uh, there is intrahepatic common hepatic duct injury which is managed by placing an infant feeding tube inside a common hepatic duct and initially we did conservative management but uh, later a laparotomy have to done uh, to uh, because uh, abdominal distension is growing and we did laparotomy and 32 uh, French ADK drain place at hepatronal branch and pelvic drain plane. Later, this case may be planned for hepatico uh, hepatico We have no mortality in this month. Thank you, sir. Go back to the cases, uh, the list of hernia. A large series of hernia cases. Uh, in which cases you did herniography? Two cases under herniography. What are the indications for herniography in these two patients? Age of the patient and uh, the reason for because now the mostly we do a mesh hernioplasty. Uh, sir, what are those two patients? These are sir, elderly male patients. Sir. Elderly male patient, you uh, do uh, herniography? Why? What is the Decision making. Show me to get together. No, we should use online. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, how do you decide? We should to decide about the mesh or no mesh. He's saying two elderly gentlemen, they underwent hernioraphy. Sir, actually, uh, honestly, this was not my decision, but uh, a few cases. Uh, I am seeing when, when since the time I have started working on this unit, I see that a few cases are managed by herniotherapy. This has oh. been the tradition for quite some time. Uh, I personally don't prefer, but lab herniotherapy umbilical was what so was a, is a, a TAPP uh, or IPOM plus or IPOM. What was done? Umbilical hernia, lab herniotherapy. Because you have to mention the exact technique. So tap done. Transabdominal preperitoneal. Transabdominal? Preperitoneal mesh replacement. For umbilical hernia. What mesh was placed? The shift, uh, 15 into 15. Proline mesh? Yes. Obviously, you did a retroretus mesh placement? Uh, no, sir. It was TAPP only, bilateral approach. Huh? TAPP only, sir. Then no, inside umbilical Achha, hernia? Retro, ins incision hernia, yes, sir. Incision hernia, it was. Yes, yes. Medical hernia, you did a retroactus mesh and incision hernia, we did uh, retroactus only. A leaf stopper. That means we have raised a flap and put the proline mesh and uh, sutured it back. Yes, sir. You don't do IPOM plus. No, this was uh, open uh, surgery, sir. Open? He's writing yes, lab hernia plus? Yes, no, umbilical hernia was TAPP, sir. Uh, we raised huh. the peritoneal flap and placed the mesh, but oh. the ventral hernia was open surgery. 
it was uh, quite a complex i mean one uh, long uh, i mean neglected paramedical hernia along with that she also had an incisional hernia at a paramedian scar which was uh, managed to rip stop abhishek the sir is asking for umbilical hernia only the lab no, no, umbilical hernia we did tap it tap tap is good if you can do tap you can do good at suturing uh, you can just use a polypropylene mesh Yes, sir. That's yes, sir. good. If one can do it, A P P repair for umbilical hernia. Say, uh, you are opposed to uh, paramedical hernias, but you need good uh, suturing skill for this. Okay. Next, next, next. You see, as I said, morbidity. You you described. You did not make a small uh, description because this patient who has got a bile duct injury. Uh, what was done exactly? How the patient was managed? That is very important. We give a little more discussion about that. Patient had a bite and into while doing lap cystectomy. That was on table. Yes. And on table you manage by placing a feeding tube. tube. And what you just give a chronology of event in this patient. So how much the brain was draining? So, how much the feeding tube was draining? What happened afterwards? Because you see, these are the things we discuss. to learn to see that how this is being managed and whether you can apply the same model for uh, subsequent uh, case happenings yes. so give us that just come to this morbidity second morbidity first is infection second morbidity yeah so you just mentioned this was a open surgery being done or lap surgery mm-hmm. being done hmm? sir lap so at least that's why i'm saying now Once you did not make a small uh, table like that, you describe each of the morbidity. This is a patient who was taken up for elective laparoscopic cholecystectomy. Intraoperatively, whether there is any difficulty or not. Yes. Sir. How was this diagnosed? That yes, you see, sometimes it is very difficult to diagnose by taking the on table, and some are done in the post op. This was done on table, and decision was taken for conversion. So it was converted to open procedure, yes. and then the procedure performed was repair over a feeding tube. Feeding tube. Yes. How else can repair be done? As you say feeding tube is one where you cannot go to the proximal and distal end of the rib. Yes. Okay, feeding tube is one which will go to one side. It cannot drain proximal and distal at the same time. Yes. What could have been the alternative? In such situation, T two placement can be done. T two. Anything else? No. What else could have been the option in this situation? You have determined that was it a complete transection or it was a partial 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 lateral tear? Yes. So if it is a partial lateral tear, the idea would have been a repair over T two or repair over a feeding tube. Yes. If it is a complete transection, what could be the option? Complete transection. So hepatico vaginostomy. Yes, hepatic. if the expertise is available, you can safely go for doing hepatico vaginostomy. Yes. Or again, if there is no segment loss, if there is no segment loss in the bile duct, you could have done a uh, repair of a T tube in the T. Okay. So what happened in the post-op? So initially the how much drain was draining initially? Initially the sir, uh, the main twenty five inch edicadian was placed. So that contains two hundred to three hundred ml per day collection. Okay. Bilious content. So that indicate that the repair that was done was not adequate. Yes, so there was some peritoneal leakage. Yes. So it was draining about two hundred ml. Two hundred to three hundred. Then? then gradually it reduces to up to fifty ml per day. Which post op day? Is a long important. POD four onwards. It that reduces. Then we play uh, send the patient for ERCP for further evaluation to SSK. And on fourth put a big send for the patient ERCP. Uh, POD five six. On a POD four gradually reduces. If if you have done a repair of feeding tube. Yes. Sir. So initially the feeding tube was around uh, around two fifty three hundred ml was feeding tube. Feeding tube. He's saying drain is two hundred. Yeah. Drain was also coming like uh, initially sir two hundred three hundred. Then sir uh, it <coughs> uh, feeding to after forty five six it it has reduced and the drain was coming around. You have to decide about the optimal management in such situation. You had a bile that injury. 
you repair it over a film tube. So you have done suture. So in this patient, if the feeding tube was draining 200, 300, it's good. It is decompressing the biliary tubes. In these patients, it is not prudent to ask for a ERCP on fifth or sixth no, no, of the uh, ERCP was uh, done, sir, uh, uh, ten, you need to attend or 12, sir. No, you think on the on fourth, fifth day, no, sir. Sir, is 16 patient required, sir, uh, laboratory. Give the correct picture. You are saying four post of depression and discharge. No, no, sir. We... So gradually. Yeah, I said earlier also. When you have a morbid <laughs> in the blood, keep a record of the patient. Sir, so, uh, and you see, we are saying four day, this is saying 16 day patient required laboratory. Sir, sir with your uh, permission, may I interrupt, sir? Yes, yes. Sir, actually the patient uh, initially when we uh, intraoperatively, when we saw it was a very small anterior tear. It was not a lateral EA. Uh, so that's why we thought uh, whether uh, opening uh, opening up and doing uh, the thing would be good or whatever. Then we took an interrupt decision that putting an IFT and maybe the thing would heal over it. Initially for three, four days, the drain was, uh, uh, for three days at least, the drain was nil. Uh, from fourth or fifth day when we clamped the IFT, after one day, uh, what happened that uh, the drain initially it was 100 ml, then 150, then we opened the IFT again, but IFT then showed no, yeah. Uh, initially, the IFT was draining quite well. I mean, around 150 to 200 uh, per day, and drain was nil. But after that, uh, the IFT became, yeah. So we, we were suspecting that might uh, the uh, IFT might have got displaced from the uh, CHT. There was no place to take a suture also, actually. The tear was such small. Then You, uh, just, uh, you just put a feeding tube. Then okay. Yes, sir, uh, why yes, why do you decide to clamp the feeding tube without doing a cholangiogram? That was not a right decision. You see, if I put a feeding tube and mm -hmm. feeding tube is draining about 200 ml or 300 no, ml, was, that is the good amount of on the fourth the feeding tube. Day, sorry, sir. So on the yeah. fourth or fifth day when we, uh, it was uh, reduced and drain was also nil. So we thought maybe uh, from the uh, fifth no, day onwards. No, you see, you see, the point is even for T tube, the concept of clamping TD on six or seven day is gone. The most important is he, once you have a bilateral injury and it was draining through the feeding tube to the extent of 150 to 200, uh, you do a cholangiogram to demonstrate yeah, that there is no peritubal yeah. leak. Uh, mm -hmm. You see, most of the time, they didn't get blocked. Last week only we have operated a patient who had five liters of bile in the peritoneal cavity. And drain was draining only 20 ml. So that is a situation. So instead of clamping a T-tube or clamping the feeding tube, it is better to do a cholangiogram, assess the biliary tree, and then decide. Because you see, even in, at the, if at the end of fifth or sixth day, a track is not formed. True, sir. If you yes. clamp, yes. and there is a peritubal leak, it will leak in the peritoneal cavity. That is what happened in this patient. Once you have clamped that feeding tube, the peritubal leakage started. And fourth, fifth, sixth day, the track is not formed. And more so, we are putting silastic uh, this, uh, tubes, PVC tubes. These mm -hmm. cause less tissue reaction. And it takes longer time for the track to form. So if you have put a T-tube or a feeding tube, you should wait for at least 10 to 15 days for the track. But actually, we immediately unclamp the tube. Uh, we know it was a uh, maybe a wrong decision, but we immediately unplanned. But no, by that time, you see, by the time the patient has good amount of leakage and she had abdominal distension and ultimately uh, and laparotomy and she had a good amount of uh, drainage. Mm -hmm. The patient was doing well till the two three then days. What, what was the finding in ERCP? ERCP was done in this patient. Give the description. Why are you giving half hearted description of this situation? So on the what ERCP, they, they told that uh, they, I mean, they couldn't visualize the biliary tree above uh, the level of injury. So they were suspecting that it is a, it is a complete tear, though, though it was not consistent with the intraop findings. Uh, so they referred it to surgery. The patient came back to us and, and that day only patient developed abdominal distension. That is yesterday, uh, day before yesterday night. So we took up for laparotomy. That, that, that is the point what I'm trying to emphasize. You see, the point is once you have a bilateral injury, this needs a good evaluation. The evaluation is once you have this patient who has got a 
feeding tube being placed and feeding tube is going down, drain is not draining. In that case, before you send the patient for ERCP, you should exclude number one that there is no internal collection. That can be done either by ultrasound or CT. Number two, uh, if there is no collection, it is better to have a guide map by doing an MRCP. If you have collection, MRCP is futile. If you have no collection, you do a MRCP, see the biliary tree. <coughs> if you find the biliary tree showing continuity and it is something beyond 10-15 days, it is a time for doing a ERCP. Because most of the time ERCP shows there is complete cutoff, which was not actually. Because yes, if there is a rent in the bile duct, often the proximal bile duct cannot be filled. Mm -hmm. So that may be a situation. So we did the US, actually, we did USG twice. Uh, I mean, on the uh, when the drain also started draining, we did USG after that also. So uh, at that time, there was no intra-abdominal collection. Patient was even stable for till the last uh, 12, 13 days. Even when again, the drain was... Shake. Again, I'm saying... Uh, doing an EVSG and deciding about collection is a, again, a, again a very uh, tricky situation. So EVSG will say normal collection, you have two meters of fluid in the pregnant cavity. So for yeah. assessing collection, EVSG is not a good investigation. Very, very, uh, we also did a CT, sir. I mean, yeah, uh, CT is very important. Yes, yes. we did a CT which also didn't show much, much of a collection actually. Sir, I'm not contradicting. Sorry, sir. I mean, if I... No, no, I'm not. It's, 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 it's just a discussion. It's, a, it's not, it's not uh, finding what has happened. But what we are trying to discuss is what should be the optimal management in such situation. Yes, sir. That is a point for discussion. Uh, everyone may have had that injury, but once the injury happened, that what was done was the right decision on table that you convert it, number one. And after conversion, either a repair of a T2 or repair of a feeding tube number one. And once that repair is done, one should wait for any further intervention. Because once you have repaired, it takes time for this bile duct to heal. That takes about four to six weeks. Even if you repair the bile duct injury over a T-tube, that T-tube has to be cared for six to eight weeks. Otherwise, if you remove the T-tube early, the fibrosis happens at the site of the injury. And this patient is likely to have biliary stricture. Mm -hmm. So, and most important is before you clamp the T-tube or the feeding tube, the most important is to demonstrate, number one, there is no intraabdominal collection. And number two, a good cholangiogram to see the anatomy of the biliary tree, whether there is uh, uh, no obstruction in the distal side, that contrast is going to the rodina and no peritubal leak. And this should be done 8 to 10 day, not quite early. Because uh, by 8 to 10 day event, the track is not mature. It takes time for the track to get mature. Okay, that one I'm trying to emphasize. Yes, yes. Thank you, sir. <coughs> okay. So one the next last thing, one yeah. last thing, sir. Uh, yeah. He has mentioned toilet mistake to me. That term is now obsolete. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I want to mention that also. Uh, what was the patient? Sir, pa patient presented with a fungating mask, and we sent FNAC for the the, the, the FNAC reports came. Ductal carcinoma in C two, it is uh, quite spreading, and in we did also uh, HRCT thorax, in which it also indicates lungs metastasis. So we just. In this case, we did a toilet mastectomy to relieve this is just exactly a palliative. What, what the surgeon is saying is that there is no term called toilet mastectomy. Yes. Patient has a fungating mass, it was smelling, it was, might be bleeding. In yes, that sir. case, the mastectomy is palliative mastectomy. Yes. You did agri dissection in this patient also? Yes, sir. You did axial nodal dissection in this patient? Mm, uh, yes, sir. Why? 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 Why was the decision for actually no decision done in this patient? Patient has got chest metastasis. Patient has got a fungating mass almost abutting the chest wall. There is no indication for doing actually no dissection. And it seems that I would. Abhishek. Yes, sir. Sir, the axillary dissection proper axillary dissection was not done. The part of the mass that was in continuity was only removed. The chest was. Obviously, we could not do it. There was fixed nodal mass in the... <coughs> That's so what you see. It was not a complete axillary dissection. You see, so how, how did you get the coverage? 
how did sir, you get the coverage sir uh, otherwise uh, um, there was a uh, quite a flabby uh, skin so we could get coverage uh, that, that was not a problem from the fungating area you could even cover the wound the fungating part yes sir then why Sorry, do you, why don't you consider for a deorgement therapy in this patient because sir, actually the mask if, if, if the if the tumor was such there is good amount of skin all around you can do a primary closer i would have preferred to give the patient new adjuvant before sir, i consider any of that fix mass, can... fix node in the axilla fix mass in the chest wall uh, you see when if you do a palliative mastectomy if you are cutting to the tumor is no point in moving that tumor patient will come with uh, but, uh, sir, very fast actually a fungating mass which was bleeding so uh, with bleeding and, uh, i mean okay Yes. So the patient bleeding, also yes. presented with anemia. We initially gave blood transfusions and prepared. So we also thought whether if the uh, patient would have been managed conservatively, we could have taken an incisional biopsy. But ultimately, we took a decision because the patient also wanted that uh, we get something at least basic. This thing done. So we we gave the option. They uh, ultimately uh, chose that. The okay. Now we we'll go. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the last presentation will be by Dr. Dithman Nambi. Uh, surgical audit from the unit three general surgery. Good morning, my respected teachers. and my dear colleagues i am dr dithman i am going to present the surgical audit for october 2022 under unit c general surgery in the summarized form total number of opd days were 9 total admission admission days 11 total number of opd patients were 1047 elective OT days number of elective OT days was 6 total time in OT is about 48 hours 45 minutes total number of minor OT days was 17 total number of mortalities in our unit in the month of october 2022 was nil total number of mortalities was 3 <coughs> now <laughs> regarding total elective admission it was about 42 including 20 females and 22 males emergency admissions were 6 and with 3 and 3 are uh, male and female each elective operation 39 including 21 male and female 18 emergency operation 3 1 male and 2 females no mortality and morbidity were 3 in which two were male and one female patient regarding some discussions on uh, elective admissions chronic calculus scoliosis patients were total 11 which were uh, managed with laparoscopic cholecystectomy chronic calculus scoliosis were <coughs> uh, total two patients uh, which were again managed with open cholecystectomy inguinal and hernia cases were five managed with open hernioplasty perian and fistula case was one managed with fistulectomy there were five diabetic foot ulcer cases which were treated with debridement and dressing now in continuation of the elective admission cases hydro hydrocele case was one which was managed with reversion of sac cervical lymph node exhibition one case luteal cyst exhibition one case this was a uh, right leg cyst which was also excised Repar recurrent appendicitis cases were two which were managed with open appendicectomy in which one was female and one was male patients ischemic gangrene of uh, little toe case was one in the right little toe which was disarticulated there was a case of phimosis under in circumcision and there were two cellulitis cases which were managed with conservative management regarding breast abscess there was a female patient with breast abscess which was who underwent ind there is a case of thyroglossal cyst 
which was managed with the existence of cytoplasm cyst, uh, cyst trunk operation, ganglionous leg excretions in the right leg. There were two, a total two cases in the male patients who underwent deprivement. There was a case of uh, right gluteal abscess in a male patient who underwent insufficient and drainage. There was a case of varicose vein in a male patient who underwent stripping with slash ligation and phlebectomy. There is a case of parotid abscess who underwent IND. Regarding emergency admissions, there is a case of compartment syndrome in the <coughs> right side who underwent fasciotomy. Acute appendicitis cases were two, one male and one female underwent open appendicectomy as emergency uh, basis. Uretary colic cases was one, which was managed conservatively. Acute colic cases were two, one male and one female managed conservatively. And there is a case of scrotal abscess also, which was who underwent IND. There are some minor procedures performed, like injection and polydocanol, uh, two cases in exhibition of serious cysts done in our uh, ROTs and also uh, one or two times in our safety OT. Then there was cases of nail extraction, which was total eight. Uh, IND cases, total five. There was uh, three cases of granuloma injection and uh, about five cases of injection canapod. Now regarding discussions uh, related to morbidity and mortality, mortality cases were nil, but th uh, there were three morbidity cases, which I want to say a few lines about this. Uh, there is a case of uh, open polycystectomy. Uh, paraparity procedure was very much fine, but later on patient developed dyserectolytemia, hyperproteinemia and sepsis. Patient uh, become restless and uh, his uh, BP parameters was also not stable. Patient was uh, uh, initially after uh, OT patient was shifted to uh, general ward. Then uh, after developing these uh, features like uh, hypotension, restlessness, and uh, patient was uh, shifted to IC. Uh, there he, uh, he got some supportive and conservative managements, and uh, patient uh, gradually reco recovered uh, from his distress. And then uh, his parameters are also corrected. Then he was uh, again returned back to ward. And after uh, continuing the same uh, conservative and supportive treatment, patient finally uh, recovered uh, from the problems and uh, he was discharged. And other two cases were mainly related to wound infections, which were also managed with uh, continuous uh, uh, dressing and antibiotics and that those patients also re recovered. No mortality case in our unit in October 2020. With one go back to the elective admissions. Why you are so emphasized? You should be presenting this in a proper uh, systematic manner. And mobility of gave one patient outline. Two patients you just described. Why? Describe we way on to analyze our spectrum of infection. What are the patients who are having infection? Whether you have sent a culture or not, what bugs they are growing, what is their culture sensitivity pattern? Everything is important. And why you are mixing up so much of things between the elective and emergency admissions? Go back. How can we keep this slide? The previous slide, yes. How can the gluteal abscess, parity abscess become elective admission? Anything admitted through OPD is not elective. If the patient is coming with an abscess, you see emergency admission. Emergency admission can come to the OPD. You got my point. Mm -hmm. The patient who are enlisted and getting admission are the elective patients. Patient who come to OPD with a breast abscess or a parody of are all emergency admissions. You all go to emergency emergency category. Okay. So try to understand when you arrange something, arrange that in order. Uh, don't jumble up say hey, you are writing very close vein and then you are writing in between a gluteal abscess and the parody abscess. Why? These two are emergency uh, admissions. And this phimosis is a elective admission. You should clearly mention that some cases we are admitting as daycare. Okay. Patients who are leaving hospital within 24 hours are to be grouped as daycare cases. We are admitting in the morning, they are getting operated in the elective theater, and then he's going out. Same evening. 
So these are all daycare cases. You should specify that also. So separate table for daycare. We can write in the bracket. It's, it's hardly one or two cases in a month. Hmm. Okay. It is good that three surgical units is operating in this institute and in the one month there is no mortality out of so much of procedure is a good outcome. But you should, as I always say, we should analyze our morbidities. We should see how these morbidities can be addressed and whether you can take some measures to reduce the morbidity and if there's a mortality, I am always emphasizing for a mortality, you give the chronology of event. You are not having a post-mortem. But give us a chronology event why this death has happened. And we try to analyze whether you could have taken some measures to avert this death. So don't be very brief in writing four or five lines for a uh, mortality case. So keep in mind, a uh, morbidity, you give a clear chronology of events what happened in the particular patient. Okay. Uh, Dr. Noshkar, any comment from your side? First of all, this is the first time when I have attended a surgical audit in our institution, and that is very uh, encouraging also. But uh, one thing I must comment, uh, the, all the BICs, uh, presence of all the BICs is very important. And I cannot and, make uh, Kuntal attend the meeting. I don't know whether that's so much busy. Repeatedly, I am sending this message to Kuntal, Dr. Rai. Uh, they, uh, Dr. Rai said he has no time in the morning that is his uh, own situation. But Kuntur is a young fellow. He should join. I am repeatedly sending this uh, class message to him. He is just uh, not bothered about it. Because this uh, DNB PGDs are all uh, here and uh, uh, not only it's, uh, uh, is a uh, learning process. Educational is a learning process. But also the it's performance of the hospital also analyzed here. So everything will happen, uh, everything, uh, all type of discussion will help them a lot. So presence of all the BICs is very important. And uh, uh, I will request all the BICs to remain present on the subsequent surgical audits in future. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. And thank you. thank you. Sir, one thing I wanted to ask. Yeah. In one of the cases, breast abscess, Diploman, you have mentioned IND. Why IND for breast abscess? So actually the patient came for a two, three times repeated OPD, sir. We have done two times aspiration. After failing of two repeated aspiration, we go for an IND, sir. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I was asking the other one. Why are you answering? <laughs> <laughs> the one should know these things. Breast aspiration, now, IND is not the first mode of treatment. You can do repeated aspiration and antibiotics. Okay. Diptaman is confused. Diptaman has put some, somehow he put things into slides. No, ah. last, sir, this is last month's audit PPT. Ah. The morbidity slide is same as last month's. No, sir. Is is it? It? No, no, it was. Uh, the, no, no. Last month they understood there is no morbidity. <laughs> I told last month they should mention some morbidity. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Shall that is Margaret's chest infection by given sepsis.